Welcome to uh, Save Your Money, Save Your Teeth, uh, the go-to podcast where curiosity meets dentistry, straight from the experts. I'm Jan Engelbrecht, and every week I'll be chatting with uh, Dr. Clifford uh, Judelman, taking a deep dive into the world of uh, dental care from a consumer's perspective. So whether you're looking to brighten that smile or protect your wallet, we've got you covered with uh, practical advice and the latest insights. So stick around as we uncover the secrets to maintaining both your dental health and also your uh, finances. Today, we talk about the economics of preventative dentistry, exploring the cost benefits of regular dental checkups and teeth cleaning to prevent those expensive treatments later. We say a very big hello and welcome to Dr. Yudelman. How's it going, Doc? Hi, Ian. Uh, nice to speak to you again. I hope you had a great week since we last spoke. And yeah, it's going well. Um, great. Thanks for having me on the show again. Yes, welcome back. Great to talk to you. So, Dr. Yudelman, what is preventative dentistry and how does it impact long-term dental costs? Uh, thank, thanks for that. So, that's, uh, I guess, the main subject for today. And so just to define that, preventive dentistry includes your regular dental checkups, your cleanings, things like fluoride application if you need fluoride or getting specific dental advice um, on how to look after your teeth and prevent any problems that may already be starting or to make make things like small cavities actually go away, which... Um, which maybe we'll be chatting about later. And then we do things like dental sealants on kids that need them, but basically to prevent decay and disease. It reduces the need for expensive treatments in the future by catching issues early or preventing them altogether. And that leads to a significant long-term cost savings. And regular maintenance helps to avoid the escalation of minor issues into serious conditions. Uh, like like you said, um, you know, a stitch in time saves nine. You know, why wait until your tooth has a big cavity when perhaps you can you can intervene and prevent the cavity in the first place? Exactly, and not to mention the pain of uh, having uh, that uh, very deep uh, cavity there and living with that and getting food stuck in it. That's the worst thing that can happen. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're getting food stuck between your teeth, don't don't leave it too long. It can cause all kinds of problems. Oh, yeah. No, that's not good at all. Can you explain uh, the economic principle behind the cost benefits of regular dental checkups? So, I mean, the principle of preventive maintenance where regular upkeep avoids major expenses applies to dental care just as it does in other things like getting your car serviced every however often the the manufacturer recommends rather than waiting until you blow a gasket and the same with like looking after if you if you've gone and invested most people their biggest investment is their house and at some point they might sell it and downgrade to a smaller property and it's so much better to to prevent you, you know to if you've got a small leak in your roof you're not going to wait until until your whole house floods and then you have to replace your carpets and so on. So, I mean, people do a lot of preventive things similar to preventive dentistry and investing in regular checkups is cost effective compared to the much higher costs associated when you treat dental diseases that develop, you know, unchecked and the economies of scale can apply when widespread preventive care reduces the overall demand for for dental emergencies and, you know, can lower the costs for, for all this type of stuff. What would you say, uh, Doctor, are the most common misconceptions about the cost of uh, preventative uh, dental care? Well, I think going on from what we just said is many people believe preventive care is expensive, but that's when they, they don't take into consideration the much higher cost of treating more advanced dental issues. You know, if, you, if you're getting regular cleanings and the hygienist is showing you how to floss a particular area that may be uh, getting some, you may be starting some gum problems. If you, if you leave that for several years, 
you you might end up at a at a periodontal specialist and have surgery and you can spend 10 or 20,000 rand to do a bone graft when maybe you could have just been getting your teeth cleaned on a regular basis and you know a lot of people get coverage if you got medical aid a lot of the time the preventive care is usually well well covered at OptiSmile, we don't, we're not signed up with any medical aid practices, I mean, medical aid schemes, but we know when patients come in and, and have a checkup and x-rays and a cleaning and so on, they claim back. And there's usually pretty good coverage. And there's also a misconception that home care is enough to avoid dental issues. And people underestimate the role of professional cleanings and checkups in preventing serious conditions. How significant would you say are the savings when you compare regular dental maintenance to uh, emergency or advanced treatments? Oh, so, I mean, when you start talking about emergency, you're talking about someone having a toothache or pain. If you, if you have a tooth that's sensitive to cold and it lingers for five or ten seconds, it's really a good time to get it seen to or perhaps, you know, you were in six or 12 months ago and the dentist said, oh, we should keep an eye on this or, the, you know, we need to watch that. At least you, you're on the lookout for any potential problems. And if you wait until you get something cold on a tooth and it starts lingering for more than 20 seconds, you know, that's called irreversible pulpitis, not to get too technical, but basically the tooth will then start twinging all on its own or maybe you drink something very cold and it throbs for for 20 30 40 seconds it goes away and then it comes back on its own at that point you need a root canal or an extraction there's no way around it mm. whereas if you got it treated earlier you would prevent that type of problem and depending on where you go in south africa a root canal can be anywhere from eight or nine thousand all the way up to fifteen thousand rand and perhaps you could have had a filling for, you know, 900 or 1,000 rand up to 1,500. So, and then even worse, if you if your tooth is not salvageable, you get an extraction. I mean, who wants to get a tooth pulled in this day and age? Yeah. And if you get a tooth pulled out, then, then maybe a dentist will offer you a bridge. That's like having three crowns done. That can be a, a lot of money or an implant, which – which is, uh, I mean, we do a lot of implants and um, the patients pay pay a lot of money. They literally pay through the teeth. I don't mean to make light of it, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, I wish those <laughs> patients came to see us five or ten years ago and, exactly. and were, were, you know, regular maintenance prevents periodontal disease, which is costly to treat. But as we mentioned in previous podcasts, there's other health issues and you can incur additional medical expenses and the cost of dental neglect can extend beyond financial implications, including you know lost wages from from work or quality of life, which might be harder to quantify but very significant. You know what? I actually remember just after school I had a, a root canal, and uh, I it took me so long to pay it off, and it was one of the weirdest and scariest uh, procedures I've ever had done. On uh, on my face, on my mouth, or in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You're not meant to scare our listeners, but I, I think most people listening maybe share share your um, the experience. And uh, uh, we're definitely going to be doing a whole podcast just about root canals and avoiding root canals. And I mean, in this day and age, you know, we like at OptiSmile, if someone does need a root canal, we have a we have a Bluetooth machine that connects to an iPad and, and it's all very carefully controlled. And, you know, doing, doing a root canal in this day and age shouldn't be the same type of experience as what you, exactly. you mentioned. Yeah, yeah but, we didn't have any of that fancy but, uh, technology. It was but just someone's got to pay for that iPad and that fancy handpiece and, <laughs> and each of those little root canal files yeah. can be a thousand rand or more you know to, to 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 use a set yeah and yeah there's nothing nothing you know there's no bargains in neurosurgery and root canals yeah no definitely now i'm sure uh, yeah. a lot of us have uh, stories to tell about root canals but it was uh, my experience with the the particular dentist i had was uh it was almost like he was a plumber that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> 
Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> we we should actually do a call in a call in sometime, and and people can share wisdom teeth stories, Yo, root canal definitely. stories, and weird. Uh, there's a lot of weird dentists out there. I get, oh yes, I get patients telling me about their their weirdo. You know, the last time they went. <laughs> stuff that that the dentist did and and i just got to sit there and nod my head because i can't believe yeah that there's dentists out there doing that stuff exactly but if you're one of those guys listening you know don't do that yeah <laughs> yeah so that's why you see that's why yeah. prevention is so important and i you know to this day i still regret not giving uh, that tooth attention when it you know i mean like your car you you see those little warning lights coming on what do you do well if you're, you're a good person you go and you take your car and you go get it seen to you don't wait for all the lights to come on before you do something about it sometimes it's too late and that's when you go into the root canal uh, uh, segment of it all but anyway yes. um doctor what role does uh, insurance play in the economics of preventative dentistry yeah so look insurance and medical aid you know i don't think it's a good it's a good term because they're in the business of making money and so a lot of the time they they will cover like the bare minimum and when it's time to get a root canal or an implant they're not going to pay very much so if if all you can afford to do is to go to a dentist on your medical aid i mean we're not on medical aids we charge out of plan rates but if if at the bare minimum going on your medical aid plan generally you have very little out of pocket cost if you want to upgrade from that um i think next week's podcast we're going to talk about you know finding a quality dental provider and and some of that might come into it but you know medical aid can help make some things affordable but i wouldn't rely on medical aid it's amazing how many people have got medical aid and just never use it at least for the bare minimum like going and getting a an yeah. x-ray and getting a checkup or a cleaning even if you even if you don't want to get fillings or root canals at least at least just go and find out what's going on so beyond the financial aspect what other long-term health implications are we looking at as a result of uh, dental neglect so in a previous podcast, I can't remember, I think it was the one before the last, um, we spoke about neglecting your dental care can lead to serious health issues such as heart disease, diabetes, uh, respiratory infections in el elderly people that like inhale bad bacteria from their mouth. And there's, there's many links between oral health and overall health. So we've covered that. Um, the other one is, you know, long-term dental pain and dysfunction can lead to difficulty eating and in in severe cases malnutrition and diminished quality of life but I, i'm not sure that that would affect a lot of our listeners unless um they've got severe phobia you could get someone that's a high lsm or with a good income sometimes i've even seen medical doctors that are very very scared of the dentist they've got the money to come they've got broken teeth i had a medical doctor not long ago with his wife insisted that he come in he had three or four broken teeth he couldn't even eat i mean it always blows my mind when you get doctors that don't look after themselves like that yeah. and then one of our previous episodes maybe we can put a link in the in the show notes is the psychological impacts you know lower self-esteem social withdrawal due to poor oral health and and appearance and and breath issues we spoke about breath in in the first podcast uh, our valentine's day the one that we kicked off the series so anyone listening to this please go back and share our previous podcast or go back and look for look for these we it seems like we're covering quite a lot of stuff i'm i'm very happy with the way our our podcasts are going Ian. thank you very absolutely much absolutely no thank you to yeah. you um doctor i think looking to the future how do you see the economics of preventative dentistry evolving so advances in dental technology and materials will definitely lower the cost of preventive care and make treatments more effective and less invasive so we're looking uh, into purchasing. There's three of these machines available on the market. 
um, and they, they seem to be getting better and better. Um, there's machines that use warm water with powder in the water. And when you get a cleaning, we just basically like hose down your tooth and it, you don't need a lot of that high pitched ultrasonic scaling and all of that polishing with a brush or a rubber cup. Um, there are already practices in Cape Town that use it. The, the machine, all these new, these new um, technology and materials are very expensive. I mean, the one machine is from Switzerland. It costs 200,000 Rand, which means if, you know, if you do even four or 500 cleanings, it's going to cost someone 500, 500 Rand a cleaning. So these things are very expensive, but at OptiSmile, we really, emphasize using the latest equipment and so on and and it, as long as it's proven and it's been going for six months or a year and there's a few of the different things on the market you know we we tend to get stuck in quite early you know there's a increase increased emphasis on holistic health um lead to better integration of dental care into the general health care and um Growing awareness of the importance of oral health could lead to changes. I mean, it, you know, someone like Discovery or other medical aids really should pay better for gum treatment and and treatment by dentists for sleep apnea because you know they'll pay for less uh, heart transplants if they if they mm. help people look after their teeth. Yeah. And uh, finally, doctor, would you say early childhood education? Uh, on uh, dental hygiene would play a significant role in reducing those uh, future dental expenses? Yeah, oh, 100%. I'm so pleased you mentioned that. So at OptiSmile, myself and, and my wife, Robin, who's the CEO and she runs OptiSmile, we've been involved not only with Rotary Club, but also with something called the Dental Wellness um, Foundation in Cape Town. We We help with a with a program in Mfileni and Kailicha, uh, with up to 20,000 kids a week. We've got these toothbrush mamas in the townships that, that actually teach the kids how to brush their teeth. They come after school, they get free toothpaste and, and they brush together. It's a social thing. We, the, we educate these mamas. I, I, when I say we, I mean, we help support, um, the the organization i i personally don't go and teach the kids but we're very involved with that and we have been for a number of years during covid um the the dental wellness uh foundation uh also had soup kitchens and sandwich programs and we got involved in in growing um, food at schools, uh, my wife is still very involved with Rotary Club. It's no longer part of part of um, dental wellness. It's part of Rotary. Is at Ellerton School. We teach kids how to grow veg- vegetables, and it actually uh, that all helps. You know, proper d- you know, diet and oral hygiene and hand washing. It's also a hand washing program. Um, yeah, you know, these things prevent uh, these gastric uh, diseases from passing from one kid to another. Things like cholera, which you'll find in the townships when there's an outbreak. You know, education. Um, funnily enough, you'd think that higher LSM or, or wealthier kids wouldn't have cavities, but we see because they can afford more candy and exactly. more coke, and we 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 see worse problems often in kids that come from wealthy families. So, you know, school-based dental health programs can reach children who might not get health education at home. So, you know, reducing decay in the community is very important. And and integrating oral health education into general health and wellness curricula, you know, reinforces the importance of dental care as part of overall health maintenance. So uh, I'm really happy to to be able to talk about that and thanks for asking and with that uh, we wrap up uh, today's episode of uh, save your money save your teeth uh, dr clifford uderman thank you so much once again for uh, sharing your expertise uh, with us we really appreciate it 
Thank you, and and thanks for having me on. And you know, sometimes um, talking about a stitch in in time saves nine, and and just being proactive. If someone's listening to the program and they're very scared of the dentist or they have low self-esteem or they haven't had a cleaning in a number of years and they feel embarrassed about their teeth, you know, they can book a, a no charge or a free video consultation with myself or one of the dentists at OptiSmile or there are a lot of other dentists in South Africa and, and around the world that do the same kind of service. Um where, you know, maybe you can ask a, a dentist uh, about a particular problem and not spend any money, just do a free video consult, at least, you know, put your foot, you know, dip your toe in the water, so to speak. I, mean, that, I think, you know, I'm not yet to encourage people specifically to come to OptiSmile. You know, if you if you live on the other side of the country or you're overseas looking, you know, listening to this podcast, you know, don't don't let problems get worse. I think that's the overall message for today. Pre preventive dental care works. Exactly. And we we have enough uh, potholes in the roads. We don't need potholes in our mouths as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, very important. Don't edit this out, please. No. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> And also, as always, so thank you, Doctor, and also to our listeners so for tuning in. Remember, while we strive to provide valuable <laughs> insights, always consult with your own dental professional for advice tailored to your personal health. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more enlightening discussions. And then join us again next week as we continue to explore the fascinating intersection of dental health and financial savvy. Until then, keep smiling and taking great care of your teeth. Discover the world of dental excellence with OptiSmile. Join us for a weekly podcast featuring Dr. Clifford Udelman, a seasoned expert with 40 years of dental experience across four continents. Gain unique insights and expert dental advice by visiting OptiSmile.co.za for articles that illuminate the path to optimal oral health. If you're seeking unparalleled dental care in Cape Town, get in touch with OptiSmile or book directly online on OptiSmile.co.za. OptiSmile, where global expertise meets local care.